So now we're gonna open up the document we've been working on. You'll click the three little dots and click on Open in Word Online. So now that we've opened the document, I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you. So, so far, as of last week, we completed steps one through three. I hope that wasn't too difficult for you. It was merely deciding who you were going to focus on for your analysis. So we'll go ahead and open up the link here so that we can remind ourselves who was it that we focused on for the project. And I'll share that with you again. So here uh, in my sample, I use Jazz Jennings. So we focused on her topic of transgender and we completed step three, which was S-P-A-C-E in the chart. So you can see that I filled it out here. For this week, we're gonna focus on just step four. It says answer the questions for C-A-T in the space cat chart. So we're gonna look at step four this week. So you'll know you're in the right place when it says step four, you see C-A-T at the bottom. So I'm gonna walk you through on how to fill this out. Um, so we'll start with letter C. Choices. It says, what are the rhetorical choices that the speaker writes or makes in the speech? Think about structure and diction. So on this side, you'll see that there is a space to fill it out. I've already filled out the parts on my example so that we can look at it together. To help you with this, I've also included a file on the team's assignment page, which you'll see here as listed space cat notes. So we're gonna click open online and we'll use those notes to help us complete our CA teacher. So the first section, it says structure. How does the author organize his ideas? How does the author's organization of his ideas support his purpose? So as you listen to the video of your speaker on that link, you'll want to think about, are they giving you information in sequence? Are they telling you about a problem and offering a solution? Are they comparing things, thinking how they're differently or similar? Are they giving details about a topic? Or are they giving you information about something that causes something else to happen, which would be the cause and effect? So in my video, she uses description. She talks about her experience of being transgender to get to her point. So that would be this box here, description. So in my team's assignment, I'm going to explain that the structure can be described as diction, and I simply need to explain why. Like I said, the author gives details about her experience being transgender. And then I have to decide, is that effective to prove her point? So I'm gonna go ahead and select effective and explain that it's effective because she provides enough details about her experience to show that she's just like everyone else. So here's a good example of the structure. You can use this example for your own assignment. We're gonna move on to diction. So let's take a look at what diction means. We're gonna go back to our Space Cat notes from the team's assignment page and scroll to where it says diction. The questions we need to focus on are what does the author use, formal or informal words? And do these words give clues to the situation, the time period, or the message? So if I need help figuring out what are informal and informal words, I can look at my chart at the bottom. So in the bottom, does she use simple words like this or does she use more formal words? So as I listened to the speech, I determined that she used more informal words. So her diction can be described as informal. And I explained that it's because she uses simple words like child and girl. Then I have to decide, is it effective or ineffective that she's using informal words? So again, I'm gonna use my chart here. The inference that I can make if she's using informal words is that she's being simple or relatable. Does that talk about her message? Of course, she wants to be relatable. 
as she's talking about being transgender and how her community is no different than anyone else's. So by that, I said she's effective because it makes her message relatable. Our next section is appeals. Which of the three rhetorical appeals, ethos, logos, path, pathos are present in the text, where and why? So here's the nice part, especially if you're watching the video, you do not have to find all three examples. If you find an example of one, that is more than enough. So I'm giving you three different examples so that you can use them to help you when you complete your project and your speaker's presentation. Uh, so the first, let's take a look in our base cat notes chart, and we're gonna scroll down to A, appeals. So here it tells us what are some examples of pathos? Are they being emotional, using imagery, using figurative language or spiritual words? So they talk about you, we, us, our. And then here, I can use this to help me as I fill out my chart. So in my example, I said that she's using images, and it was about her watching a movie of being transgender for the first time as a young child. Then I decided that it was effective because it encourages the reader to feel compassionate about the speaker's search of belonging and values being a transgender. So that's an example of pathos. For my logos, my Space Cat Notes says, that I need to look for logic, facts, statistics, reasoning, where is she trying to make sense or use common sense. And I can use these sentence starters as I put together my answer. So I said through the showing the fact that the speaker had an interview back when she was younger to discuss her experience of being transgender. So that was an important fact she included. I said it was effective because it showed that she has made the effort in her past to teach others about the transgender experience and the value of their community. And then the last example is for ethos. So if I take a look at my chart here, it says I need to look for where the author is believable. Does she have any kind of associations with groups? Is she using any kind of experts or is she showing she has personal experience or someone else's experience? So then I can use this sentence starter here to fill it in my chart. So I said the author's use of ethos allows the reader to trust the experience of jazz. So we can trust her as a speaker and that's effective because her experience teaches others to accept themselves and treat others with respect. So again, for the appeal, appeal section, you do not have to have an example for ethos, logos, pathos. Instead, you can just fill out one of these sections in the appeals category. Okay, the last one isn't too hard. It's for tone. So we're thinking about what the author's attitude is towards the subject. What's the tone? Is the tone the same throughout the piece or does it change? So I'm going to use my Space Cat notes to help me out. Again, I'm thinking about what kind of feeling what I expect in the situation, what are some feeling words, and then how do those feelings support the message? So if you were to watch Jazz's video, she is a lot of, she uses a lot of positive energy. So I'm gonna think about using some positive words on this list. So I came up with the fact that her tone is thoughtful and warm. And I also understood that it's consistent. It doesn't change throughout her speech. And that's because the author speaks about her experience in a positive way. So she consistently stays positive. I said that's important or effective in supporting her claim since it focuses on the positive experiences of being transgender to each other is to respect the community. So that's the last step for this week. I'm hoping you can use this as an example Please make sure that you turn in the assignment when you're finished. So you'll double check that everything is filled out for step four in your chart, and then you click the big purple turn in button.